is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. And good afternoon, 204 the time. Well, the gun kid is dead. Now, I know all the media are saying gunman. He wasn't a man. He was a 16-year-old. Was he? Yeah. Um, The 16-year-old girl is hospitalized in critical condition, critical injuries. 14-year-old boy suffered a gunshot wound. Wasn't clear who shot him. He's in stable condition. That's good. The officer, um, the resource officer at the school, who doubles as a SWAT team member, was unharmed. The gunman, excuse me, gun kid, was shot and killed. Or he took his own life. Uh, That's what we're getting right now. And, of course, politicians responded swiftly, acknowledging that this uh, shooting increases the pressure of action against gun violence Anger swelling nationwide over the Valentine's Day killing of 17 people in Florida. Um, Politics as usual. And um, the officer, the deputy Blaine Gaskell, six-year vet, um, he contained the situation in less than 60 seconds. Good job. The shooter was 17, so he's not a gunman. He's a gun kid. Um, Austin Rollins. His motive wasn't immediately clear, but... They were saying, well, it probably was a relationship that went bad. A relationship with a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old? What, 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 what relationship? Further evidence that the uh, crying and whining and protesting and government help us isn't going to do anything. Nothing. The, the officer was stationed inside the school, pursued the shooter, fired a single round, he said it wasn't immediately clear whether that bullet hit Rollins or the boy um, took his own life. Uh, simultaneously, the shooter fired around as well. So in the hours to come, uh, we'll find out through detailed investigation. Agents with the FBI and, uh, ju- you know, all the stuff that you now know. So you could cite it better than I could. Police eventually kicked in the locker room door, a 14-year-old ninth grader, um, came in. Uh, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Did any of the protests, the walkouts, uh, the uh, clamoring for government save us? We're tired of the violence. We're no. Start treating teenagers like teenagers, not like little adults, not like potential votes, and say, look, this is what we're doing. This is what you can't swing a big magnet across the the country and suck up all the guns. That was a uh, one of the ladies on the view idea a long time ago. You know, you know what as I thought about this, I thought, okay, first of all, you got a sixteen year old that or seventeen year old that's so obsessed with a sixteen year old that he get and it breaks up and they go to shoot each other. Come on. This is what happens when you treat kids like little adults. And that's precisely what we've done. You know, we need to revisit childhood what is childhood what is that what does it consist of you know i guarantee you i guarantee you uh, most of these boys could be taken in hand by their moms and straightened out pretty quick but if they don't have a mom or don't have a dad or they have a mom and dad spitting out kids like a like a pez dispenser with no f- forethought about how you're going to raise then you got this problem democratic representatives uh (laughs) well of course hoyer praise the first responders you know i am so sick of of empty suits standing in front of microphones well we would like to thank the 480 people behind me let me cite them by name the the guy did his job did it well the resource officer kept probably a lot of kids from being killed he answered the call this morning, and of course, the, 
you know, politically, you've got a, you know, all this uh, poetic flowery. He he responded with uh, swift action. We sympathize. We empathize. You know what I want to say? I am so frustrated with this. I just want to say, shut up. Polit- oh, by the way, Media Matters, if you're listening, here's one for you. Politicians in D.C. have started using school shootings as a new cottage industry to garner votes. And that's the truth. Uh, Senator uh, Ben Cardin, I mean, I could go through all afternoon and just cite all the politicians that have come out. I mean, they're falling over themselves, falling over chairs, rolling on the ground, jumping up, trying to get in front of a camera after the shooting. Senator Cardin, out of, uh, he's a Democrat out of Maryland, he spoke to reporters near the high school, I'm angry. At a minimum, universal background checks and a ban on assault-style weapons, a kid used a pistol. Shut up. I believe momentum is building for reform. Fueled, yes, fueled, I say, by student activism. He's using the kids. Student activism for what? This truly is a moron wrapped in an idiot. Student activism, nay, they won't be silenced. And by the way, have you got one of my cards? Here's one of my cards. Are your parents, uh, here, have your parents give me, these students are literally just not taking no for an answer. No to what? I can tell you that Americans are listening to our students. I think our political system will respond. If that is an outright blatant manipulation and choreographing um, using kids for political purposes, please explain to me how it is not. We're going to ban bump stocks, universal background checks, get rid of those assault-type weapons. The kid walked in with a handgun. It's already illegal. Genius for the guy to buy a handgun. Well, if we'd outlaw handguns, there wouldn't be available. Republican Governor uh, Larry Hogan, he accused uh, the Democrat-led legislature of failing to uh, take action on uh, the safety plans for the schools. uh, First of all, if if you're a politician listening to me, this isn't about guns. Pull your head out. This isn't about guns. This is about politics being the new theology for everyone in Washington. We don't like guns. Kids, what do you say? And, of course, the kids go nuts. They don't know why. They're kids. Treat them like kids. You know, these kids all of a sudden are now the new leverage point for politicians. Every time there's a school shooting before the gun smoke clears, you know, there are 15 vans with politicians piling out. Talk to me. Talk to me. I've got something to say. Yes, we. along with the kids, we're going to make Oh, man. All right. Can you tell that I'm sick and tired of this? School safety. Resource officer worked. Politicians go back to your office and verbally masturbate about something else you're concerned with. This is insane. Absol- and if you're a parent of these kids in a high school, you ought to be as outraged as everybody, even more so. You know, you can't use my kid as a political pawn. Sorry, can't do it. Oh, but it's in their best interest. These children need to be heard. No, they don't. They need to be treated like teenagers and younger. What, what are they going to say? We, we listened. We want the government to do something. The government's got to save me. Whoa, what are we going to do without the government? They're not old enough to realize that government can't do a damn thing. It's proven over and over. Okay, I got I got to stop. I got to stop. Uh, let me step aside very quickly. We'll check your afternoon drive, get you around the hot spot safe and sound, then back to your calls in the court of public opinion. I'm Rick Roberts, unless, of course, there's a politician that wants to jump in before I check the traffic report. Anybody? Now tell telling me I'll have to wait. All right, 217 the time, the gun kid at uh, a Maryland high school was stopped by armed officers, uh, or officer, singular, stopped dead in his tracks, literally. 
Now, every politician and his dog is trying to get in front of a TV camera or a microphone in Maryland. We need to listen to the youth of today. I believe momentum is building for reformed, fueled by student activism. I don't know what you're talking about. Your, your, your kid's childhood is being taken by politicians, using them, manipulating them, choreographing all of this for what? For their own agenda. That's what. It wasn't a gunman. It was a gun kid acting like an adult. And, of course, all the politicians are rushing in. Yes, we need to do something. You need to shut up, sit down, t- treat these kids like what they are, kids, I'm going to go to your calls. Hang on just a second. When you were young, when you were young, something would happen at school or, you know, at the movies or at home in the neighborhood. Now, it's very simple. When a toddler falls down, what's the first thing they do? What's the first thing? They look up at mom or dad. They're not crying yet. They're just looking. Is this something to be concerned about? Should I start wailing? Should I start crying? Now, if you go, oh, my God, she's probably broken a leg, uh, then the kid's going to go berserk and start crying. If you reach in, oh, did you fall down? You okay? All right, come on, let's go. Then that situation is contained. What politicians are doing, every single time there's a school shooting, they're treating the entire student body like, three-year-olds that just fell off the slide. Oh, my God, you probably we need an ambulance. We need, And, of course, being children, they glob on to whatever the reaction is. So if you've got a kid in one of these high schools, uh, call D.C. Call the politicians and thank them for robbing your kid of their childhood. Oh, man. Ah. Let's go to uh, Kurt in Bedford. Kurt, thanks for waiting. How you doing? I'm good, Rick. I hope you are as well. I share your ire. I um, I became aware of that uh, good guy with a gun uh, with training. You know what that equals in a gun-free zone? If you add all three of those things together, Rick, that equals dead shooter. And the guy did uh, succumb to his injury, so well done on that uh, policeman's part. But the, pol- the politicians, whenever I see them gather in the suits around the microphone after, no matter what tragedy it is, my wife and I just don't watch it. We fast-forward it. I have no interest in hearing what they have to say. I'll listen to a police officer occasionally, a fire chief, or an FBI official, but not even them so much. Uh, I, ju- I just fast forward it. And uh, th- what these politicians are doing with these children, using them for political pawns, is insane. This is not a federal issue. This is a state and a district by district issue. In the state of Texas, we have over 200 districts that allow guns in schools with trained people to guard those children, those precious children. And that's how you guard precious children, a good guy with a gun, because there's nothing else going to stop a bad guy with a gun. And you know it, I know it, anybody with any common sense knows it. And these po- politicians, to do what they're doing, I think the American people see it, and I think it's going to backfire on them. Pardon the pun. Yeah, no, listen, I think you're right. I am so sick and tired, disgusted, frustrated uh, with, the, with people trying to make political hay out of school shootings. You know, it, yeah. And they're talking about everything but the problem. You know, I challenged, I challenged, Kurt, yesterday, any television news station that's listening to me, any television news station, it's going to take more more work than going to the archives and pulling up some B-roll, but I challenged any television news station, instead of, uh, you know, three or four uh, clips of, well, this is what an AR-15 looks like, and then, uh, you know, people shooting at the gun range, and then talking about the guns for, you know, 20 minutes, do this. Go out and do some investigative work on on the backgrounds that all these shooters had in common. Go, go do a close-up of a kid sitting on the back porch uh, petting the dog. No friends, no parents at home yet, nothing going on. Go do some background. I know. Well, what do you mean, Rick? What do I mean? That's the core problem. Not your your video of this is an AR-15. As you can see, it's scary looking. That's not the point. We've had scary looking weapons uh, since time immemorial. Do some background work on what all these shooters have in common. 
You know, here's a 17-year-old and a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old. And you're going to tell me it's all about, well, if we didn't have AR-15, shut up! If you're not going to discuss the real problem, don't even waste my time talking to me. Uh, Jim in Wiley. Jim, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Oh, doing great. Thank you for taking my call, Rick. Uh, something you just said uh, piqued a little thing that before I, before I go off on the other thing, tangent, uh, nowhere in any of the stories have they mentioned the gun that was used by the kid shooter, so you can bet that it's not an AR-15. No, it's a pistol. Okay, but that's what I mean. It's not, uh, the gun is not mentioned anywhere, so you know it's not an AR-15. The um, other thing that I wanted, the reason I called is right before you came on, the uh, national news came on, and there was some woman that was giving this information about this shooting, and she was sitting there as she was what she said was the shooter was gunned down by the school resource officer. Not, not that she was, not that he was stopped, but she had to get in there. The, the twist. Well, that's another person being gunned down, and that just irritated the heck out of me. That you know, instead of saying he, you know, he did what he was supposed to, he stopped the shooting. She tried to slur him by saying he gunned down this kid. Of course, everything is wordsmithing, everything is posturing, everything is political. Yeah, he got gunned down uh, from a police officer that took a defensive position, uh, became aggressive, took out the shooter so he didn't shoot any more kids. I wonder what uh, that, that, that same lady, that same uh, politician would say if this was her kid's school. Well, they really it wasn't even gunned down. He was stopped. He, he wasn't gunned down. He was stopped. They also stopped the situation. Well, I, I applaud you, Jim, for, for reading between the lines, for, for seeing what's really going on. They've been doing this forever. You know, wordsmithing or, you know, turn of phrase or whatever it happens to be uh, to get an agenda across. Senator Ben Cardin, Democrat from Maryland, out there speaking to reporters near the high school. Like I said, the gun smoke still hanging in the air. He's, I'm angry. I'm angry. At a minimum, universal background checks and a ban on assault-style weapons is needed. What the hell are you talking about? It's not legal for a 16, 17, 14-year-old to buy a pistol anyway. You moron. Man, somebody, one of those reporters, just one. Excuse me. Excuse me, Einstein. Um, is it legal for a 17 or a 16 or a 14-year-old to buy a handgun? Well, I don't know, but we'll look into it. I'm convening a panel uh, to issue a study so we can... You, these kids want action. The only action I would have taken is knocking him out. All right, uh, 2.32 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is your afternoon drive for Dallas-Fort Worth. The Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show on News Talk 820 WBAP. Man, I have hit... I have hit my level of frustration today. Now, I, I'm looking at all these sleazy underbelly politicians using the school shooting for political purposes. What do you think CNN's reporting on? We, we've got bombs going off at FedEx. Um, in Austin, there's been at least uh, four package bombs. They're investigating that. We've got uh, a school shooting uh, that happened this morning. Uh, we got people covering that. Inve- what do you think CNN is talking about? The porn star is telling the truth about having unprotected sex with President Trump. What? What do you, you think that's the news people care about? Oh, excuse me. And they followed that with, Trump praises Putin for his re-election win, despite attacks on U.S. That's not news. That's the the media arm of the Democrat Party. There's nothing newsworthy in that garbage. All right, I, I got to stop. Let me go to um, where am I going? Angelo in Arlington. Angelo, I uh, I appreciate your patience. Thank you very much. How you doing, Angelo? God bless you. I'm doing good. And you just said the key word, garbage. Uh, All they do, all the liberals, politicians, I talk to people in society here, and this is what I'm going to, I'm going to run for Congress and I'm going to get up there and say, I am running for Congress because I have common sense. Nobody has common sense because 
the main point in this whole situation in our society is not the weapon that somebody uses. It's the determination of them to commit the evil act that they're ready to commit. I can go into a drawer today and get an ice pick and go kill somebody. So are we going to ban all ice picks? Knives. The Planned Parenthood is butchering up God's creation. Every day with knives, you don't hear nothing about that. These people from the 60s, and I'm one of them, but at least my parents were brought me up right and I was strict. The 60s, you remember the 60s? We're going to love each other. We're going to take care of each other. And we're the ones, excuse the word, to screw at everybody. You know, I'm just sick. Like you said, I'm sick of this non-common sense and then using children. And I, I told my daughter, the boy's five years old. Let him grow up and have a childhood. You're all trying to push him to be swimmers and golfers. You know, he comes around my house. He tells me I'm funny and he has a lot of fun with me because I go back to the old days. Well, there's there's something to be said for childhood. Childhood isn't one of those esoteric things you pick out of a book someplace. It's a period of development for human beings. There is no childhood anymore. You know, you're, you're so obsessed about a relationship, it goes south, so you go to school with a gun. What? What are you talking about? Of course, the media, that's too damn much work. Let's find out the background, the relationship, um, why this kid doesn't have any friends, why he sits in his room um, at night, you know, playing school shooter video games, and there is such a thing, uh, until 2 o'clock in the morning. L- let's do that. See, that's that's too hard. It's easy to go get a, some video of an AR-15 and people shooting at a range and then uh, talk about uh, uh, the NRA. You know, that's the news? No, that was a presentation. That wasn't news. That was a presentation of a certain bias. That's what that was. Like I said, go do some investigative work. Find out the background of each one of these shooters. Uh, You're going to find a common thread. You know, it it doesn't have anything to do with a gun. And these politicians, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent or apolitical. If you are using these school shootings, and many of you are, to further your political agenda... I'm afraid I'm afraid you've gone down a road you can't turn around and go back from. At least you have with me. Um, like I said, you want to get these kids straightened out? You know, dads play a, a very important part, but so do moms. You know, I will tell you, my son, 6'4", 6'5", 230 pounds, he's a big kid. Always was, except when he was little. He was like a little scrawny kid and hit a growth spurt. He was more afraid of disappointing his mom than he was of dealing with me in punishment. He was. You know, I mean, yeah, he'll deal with me if there's some punishment to be meted out for this or that or the other thing. But, God, disappointing mom? No way. I'll do anything to keep that from happening. You know, we need to do some investigative work. What's going on with kids, uh, these loners, these kids that uh, have no friends seemingly? that make threats on social media? Well, it was a joke. There is no joke. And get the politicians out of it. Everything you put your hand on, you screw it up. All right, let's go to uh, Jim and Rowlett. Jim, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Good. Uh, listen, uh, the Democrats, you know, this is the first big high school shooting in a long while, I think. And uh, these kids are articulate. Even are you talking about Florida? Yeah. Okay, I was talking about the school shooting this morning. Right, yeah, but I'm just saying what they've done is they've taken these kids and they use them as a – they're basically uh, human shields. They're using them uh, because they think that these kids are unassailable. What they've gone through – you know, the politicians are saying we have to listen to the kids. And what they've gone through makes them unassailable. Nobody can criticize them. And that's exactly the Democrats have found what they think is the perfect vehicle to get gun control pushed down the American uh, citizen's throat. Well, they're, they're, you, you're right. They're using kids that have absolutely no clue. They're teenagers. You know, they're right. not supposed to know yet. You know, let them enjoy it. 
you know, some some semblance of childhood, but the politicians won't do that. They're all they've all gathered behind these kids as these kids march forward, uh, shouting at the government to help them, not knowing about anything as far as solutions are concerned. And then as soon as the cameras show up, the politicians jump out from behind the kids and uh, endear the kids. Where these kids will be heard. For what? Rick, what are they going to say? Rick, can I tell you a little story? Sure. Uh, you know, you were talking about uh, some kids are like your son, who's six foot. Is he still? Is he playing uh, minor league ball? You know what? He uh, he's getting ready to uh, pitch for a couple scouts. Um, okay, good. He uh, he's got uh, he's got two scouts that are interested. He's getting he's throwing every day. He's going to the gym. Uh, he's getting ready to try out. Uh, in front of these two two uh, scouts, and I'm very pleased that they're making time for him. Okay, well, the, the story is about, you know, uh, some kids fear their mother more than they do their father, uh, or disappointing. So uh, my brother, back when I guess he was 13 or 14, I was two and a half years younger than he was, but this kid across the street was bullying him, and he came, finally, he came home crying to my mom, and my mom, he said, Mom, I keep Johnny Hartman, this is a kid's name, he's been Bully and me and my mom got just so upset. She said, you go out there, you call him out, and you beat the hell out of him. <laughs> and she said, Jim, you have to go with him and make sure he does it. And I'm two and a half years younger. This guy's, I'm four foot two, and this kid's six, almost five eleven. And I'm saying, okay, mom, I'll help him a lot. But <laughs> he went out there, and he whipped that guy's ass I mean, in, in a heartbeat, because he was afraid of my mom more than he was afraid of this kid. Well, see, th- that's what I'm saying. We're, we're shortchanging moms, I think. I mean, every every kid is motivi- motivated by one of the other parents. And, you know, when my, my, my son was in school, you know, mom was the one that made sure the, uh, you know, Under Armour was in the bag and the mitt was there or during football season, the pad- pads were there and his T-shirts were clean. What I don't know what it is about young boys they wear like 15 t-shirts a day anyway um and my daughter uh looked to me uh she was very studious and and um you know i motivated her and his mom motivated him and then when she died you know he had a tough time coming back and then that's why you know he got started so late but you know that's that's separate and aside as far as i know none of my kids ever went to school and shot somebody you know the the news reports you know, about, well, he was able to get an AR-15. Shut up. How stupid do you think the consumers of your news are? How stupid? We're not stupid. My audience isn't stupid. We may disagree. You know, we may have a visceral reaction to something, but they're not stupid. You can't play them. You can't do that. Democrats, it is obvious what you are doing. Obvious. You are using the emotion and, in some cases, grief of teenagers to push your political agenda, and that's enough. It was enough, you know, for you to do this time and memorial for one issue or the other, but now you're doing it to kids. And there are people in society that will buy into that. Bottom line, another school shooting, girl in critical condition, prayers with her. Um, The shooter, well, he shot a 14-year-old also. He's in stable condition. And the resource officer that doubled as a SWAT team member took him down, stopped him dead in his tracks, literally. Now, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about who was this kid? What was up? What was going on? You know, was he that kid uh, after school sitting on the back porch, no friends, nothing to do, parents not home? No, we won't. Well, he had a handgun. Rick, he had a handgun. We got to take a look at controlling handguns. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? It's a handgun. Unbelievable. 2.44 the time. Let's check your afternoon drive. All right, 2.48 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, the court of public opinion, your afternoon drive for Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, Toll-free across the country, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Ask yourself this question. Ask yourself one question. It's a school shooting. 
not unlike the ones we've seen this last year. There's a school shooting. They're still doing an investigation. And somebody sets up four or five mics out in front of the school. Nice, uh, nice background. You got the school flag waving in the wind. Why are the politicians there? Why are they there? I mean, aside from the governor of the state or the mayor of the city or the principal of the school, why are politicians even there? What purpose do they serve? Think about that for a second. Uh, Let's go to uh, Chris in Dallas. Chris, thanks for waiting. Hi. Hey, Rick. How's your afternoon? Uh, Good. You're about as fired up as I am, so just know that you've got some patriots out here that are on the same level as you. That's what we need. We need more patriots, fewer politicians, and we need parents to do their jobs and the media to just give us the facts, not give us a presentation. Amen. And let me tell you, Rick, you know, I've been an LTC, CHL carrier for over 10 years now. I've never gone a day where I didn't have a handgun at my side. And thank God I've never had to use it. And, uh, you know, thank God we had this resource officer there today that wasn't a coward like the one we had in Florida. And, you know, it's ironic to me that the leftists, you know, are out there saying, oh, we've, we've got to save the children and protect the children when, you know, they're the side of abortion and, and everything else. But my point here is, Who do they call when there's a shooting? Who's the first person that gets a call? It's someone with a gun. And it is just mind-blowing to me that, that to this day, consistently they blame the gun. And I just, I don't, I'm beside myself right now. I'll tell you why. Because politically, you know and I know, the government can't protect you in school. They can't protect you anywhere. Um... They, they can barely run their own business. Um, the government can't do anything for you. You are your own first responder. And you're right. In a school shooting, they don't call up their local politician. Somehow they get the message. They dial 911, a good guy with a gun. That's what they do. But, see, it, it takes work to try and figure out, hmm, Okay, here was a loner. It was obvious. Uh, we had several red flags. But instead, I get uh, five minutes of B-roll out of the archives of what an AR-15 looks like. That AR-15 didn't go shoot those people. So, I mean, that's the easy way out. The hard way is trying to delve into what we've done to our society. And we've all done it or allowed it to be done. Uh, that's, that's the problem. That's the reason. Uh, why do politicians even show up at something like this? Well, you know, that's it. It's to push their agenda. They want to get rid of the guns. They're not going to tell you that. And I'll tell you the other issue is, is we've taken God out of our schools, out of our homes. We've almost made it, you know, unfashionable to be religious and, you know, to fear consequences for taking another human life. Uh, you know, to fear burning in hell for eternity is uh, it's just it's not even on the table anymore. There's, the consequences, you look at this, uh, this kid out, you know, in Florida that did the shooting. The first day, the, uh, the prosecutor, you know, and, and then the public defender, the public defender's there rubbing his back, you know, and, and coddling him, and, oh, you're, you're okay, it's going to be fine. It just, it's, it's insane to me. Well, it, it, you know, the tragic part is, yeah, I know what you're talking about. They're sitting at the table, and, the, you know, the public defender's patting him on the back and leaning in right. and talking to him, and we're, you know, it's going to be fine. That's probably more attention than that kid received in the last year. Now, that's no excuse for sh- shooting people, but that's the root problem, not not a piece of hardware. It, it's, uh, I don't understand why, you know, intelligent people get this, but a steady diet of the, the ridiculous media that doesn't give you news. It gives you a presentation based on their particular bias. Uh, and then, well, that must be what it is. The news says so. I, I don't know. And that politician was just talking about, okay, first of all, any politician that shows up at a school shooting, with the exception of maybe the mayor or the governor or somebody that has a vested interest in being there, any politician that shows up, write their name down. Anytime you see it, vote for the other guy, whoever it is. All right, I, I, I got to stop. Oh, in CNN, I love this. Talk about an absolutely pathetic excuse for news gathering. We got school shootings. 
you know, there's there's a kid dead, another one in in critical condition, another one in stable condition. We got uh, another Austin bombing this time at a FedEx. I mean, all of this stuff's going on, right? This is the news of the day. What's CNN doing? Well, the porn star took a polygraph, and it looks as though she's being truthful when she says she and Trump had unprotected sex. I don't care if they had sex, protected or otherwise. What the hell's that got to do with anything? You know, that's on them. You know, I don't care if he had uh, sex with 100 porn stars all at the same time. Actually, it'd be impressive. But it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I didn't hire him because... Well, you know, I need a good pastor. I need a good spiritual leader. No, I hired him because the politics as usual got to be too much. Stop campaigning, saying what I want to hear, and then when you get there, go along to get along. I mean, look at Harry Reid. Harry Reid had to hitchhike to Washington and was so poor. And he left a multimillionaire, probably on first-name basis, with every casino owner in Las Vegas. Yeah, the system works great, doesn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, CNN's CNN's other top headline? Trump called Putin to congratulate him on his re-election win, despite Russia attacking the U.S. I mean, what a pathetic waste of a network. Well, what is that? You know, we got this, no wonder politicians do what they do. And the media, well, not all media, most media follows along like a little puppy. You know how puppies follow feet? You know, they're too little to look up and take, uh, you know, eye-to-eye uh, cues, so they just follow feet. You know, you go that way, they go that way. You go left, they go left. Like a little puppy following feet. That's what the media does. Man, I am so sick of this. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm not even sure that's true anymore. Rick Roberts. Yeah, I know it's Rick Roberts. That's me. I know who I am. Right uh, there's got to be a, a, a few hundred million more like me. Well, where are they? Where are they? No, I'm sorry, didn't mean to jump on you there. But, but aren't you sick of the status quo? I'm sick of the status quo. I'm just, I'm... Oh, wait a minute. Breaking news on CNN. Trump's bid to dismiss a apprentice contestant's lawsuit. Did you know there was a school shooting? Are you aware of the bo- serial bomber in Austin? Polygraph, porn stars truthful about unprotected sex with Trump. Unbelievable. If you're watching CNN, you you obviously have some type of cerebral issue. You have to. You have to. Do I care about that? No. How about putting childhood back where it belongs with children? How about keeping politicians, Republicans, Democrats, independents? I don't care what your affiliation is. Why are you even there at the site of the school shooting? Well, I want people to know I care. No, you don't. You're fishing for votes. You're using these kids for political purposes. Even if I agree with you, which I don't, I I would say this is wrong. It's wrong. I just got this in. Rick. The firearm, the kid was 17, it was a handgun. The firearm was definitely stolen. We need to enact stolen gun control. And while we're at it, raise the age to possess a stolen firearm. That'll work. That makes sense. There you go. Thank Jim. I appreciate That's Jim from Colorado. Uh, Jim, I thank you very, very much. <laughs> uh, how about this? I got this in from Gwen. See, I don't give last names out. Rick. Couldn't agree more with you about the loss of childhood. Maybe we should have a gun safety class in schools instead of a safe sex class in schools. If guns are so dangerous and sexuality is fluid, have a great day. There you go. Instead of putting a condom on a banana, let's put a round in the chamber and show you how to do it safely. (sighs) You know what? I'm going to let you talk. Because I'm going to say something that's going to get me thrown off the air. I know it. Um, what? 
What's up? I was going to tell you I got my hand on the dump button over here. Oh, okay. Well, I got you covered. Yeah, keep, keep, and keep, more than one way. Keep it right there. Tom and Alvarado. Tom, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Tom? Well, I'm for the good guy with the gun, that's for sure. Me too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just got a simple math question for the liberals out there. I don't know how many AR-15s have ever been sold in America versus how many have been used in one of these school shootings. You know, do the math. There's nothing wrong with the guns. Uh, somebody, simple, told me, somebody told me the other logic. day. Yeah, somebody told me the other day, well, they're just used to kill human beings. No, it's actually a pretty good varmint gun. I bought two in Gillette, Wyoming, Colt AR-15 Sporters uh, 20 years ago, probably longer than that, um, and I bought them to collect. I, I mean, you know, it's it, look, we got to get to a point, Jim, or excuse me, Tom, where, where we don't even discuss the firearm. It doesn't matter. Exactly. I mean, it, it truly doesn't matter. The only reason that we're discussing guns instead of what the hell's wrong, excuse me, instead of what's wrong with people is because the media and politicians have focused on the firearm because they're too stupid to figure any other reason out. The reason, well, I don't know. He came from a broken home. He didn't have any friends. Um, he sat at home playing uh, school shooter videos. There is a, a video called School Shooter. The operator gets to uh, walk into school and shoot people at random. Um, well, Rick, videos don't cause problem. Uh, you know what? I'm going to prove to you you're wrong. Did you ever take driver's ed in school? Ever take driver's ed? Okay, at the end of driver's ed, you're sitting in that T building in your little desk. You've gone through, you know, driving with the instructor, which is the worst driver I've ever seen. Nothing against those guys. Um, and at the very end, they show you all the gory accident photos, like Signal 13 and those other gory, you know, accident scene videos, right? And what does that do? It makes that parking lot at that school the safest place to drive on planet Earth for about three weeks, maybe. They are so desensitized by their buddies and peer pressure and all the rest that that all goes away. You know what I mean? It, it all goes away. The same thing. If you sit in your bedroom, dark at night, uh, playing school shooter or some of these other videos, there are videos. I'm not making this up. There are videos, and I, I, I need to be delicate here, where you can pull your car over to the side of the road, buy some crack from a dealer on the corner, pick up a hooker two p blocks later, and she pleasures you while you drive down the street. There are videos like that. In the school shooter video where you walk into a school and just, show, we're not talking about Mario Brothers, okay? We're, we're, we're not talking about Pong. We're not talking about those videos uh, that uh, most people don't even, they look with the what? Mario what? Was it an Italian? Don't tell me they don't have an effect on somebody that plays them two, three, four hours a day. The Sandy Hook killer, when they went to investigate, his mom, oh yeah, I play, not his mom, he killed her, his aunt, I think it was. Yeah, he plays those videos all the time. What was loaded? What was loaded up in his, his gaming system? School shooter. That's what was loaded up in the Sandy Hook shoot. N nobody ever goes there because that's difficult. It takes some work. You know, some politician can't uh, tell one of their aides, yeah, go get me about three pictures of AR-15s real close up. I got a press conference coming up. They can't protect you. Government can't protect you from anything. I know. I got a break again. Oh, Lord. Have you ever had one of those days when you had more to say than you could get out of your mouth at the time? Oh, man. Uh, <clears throat> Twelve minutes after the hour, a kinder, gentler Rick Roberts when we return. Probably not. All right, 16 minutes after the hour. We don't need gun control. We need politician control. That's what we need. Uh, there was a gun kid. They call him a gunman in the uh, in the, the news because, well, after all, it sounds more uh, well, it sounds more exciting. A gunman, bum 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 bum, uh, walked into the school. It was a gun kid. He was 17. Shot a girl. 16. She's in critical condition. Shot a kid, 14, and I was still trying to figure out whether I wanted to ask a girl to go steady at 14. Evidently, there was some kind of 
relationship that went off track. What? At 14, 16, 17 years old, resource officer, which uh, also worked with SWAT, took the kid down. One shot. That's what they're there for. You know, I'm getting a lot of calls. That's why we need to arm people to the teeth and all that stuff. You know, do I carry? Yes. Have I ever had to shoot anybody? No. I don't want to. I'm going to tell you something. I'm a little over six foot tall, 230 pounds, took Taekwondo for 17 years, fought tournament karate in my 20s for about eight years. I ride motorcycles. I do all that stuff. But, you know, I'm never as strong, never as strong as when I hit my knees at night and ask forgiveness for all the mess-ups I've done, period. I hit my knees, and I pray to a much higher power, the creator of heaven and earth, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, Rick, you're not supposed to say that. We're on commercial radio. Well, that's too bad. There's a scripture that says, deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father. I don't even want to be in that zip code. I believe in God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Works for me. You do whatever you want. If you haven't tried it, probably wouldn't hurt. Just like I put up on Facebook, hashtag put God in prayer back in schools. Bring biblical principles back to school. That's what the country was founded on. Liberalism ran amok in the school system starting in the 60s, and you see what we've got now. It's not the hardware. It's the software. Parents having kids that don't know how to parent, Kids not knowing what to do other than what they watch on television and in video games and what they hear and what the politicians are grooming them to be, professional victims. The only thing they need to know to do is take, take the matter in their own hands and they don't know how to deal with that. Why? Because they're kids. Stop treating them like little voting adults. If you're a politician, you don't belong in front of that school today. Unless you're the mayor or the governor, you don't belong there. Okay, uh, let me get to your calls. Let's go to Kelly in Waco, Texas. Kelly, how are you doing? Hey, Rick, I'm great. Good. Um, I have a lot to say. Well, I'm, that's what I'm here for. First of all, I am born in the blood, and I'm a teacher. And uh, I work in the main campus of a high school and the alternative campus, half day at each. Good, okay. I'm telling you that we don't put up, this is Texas, our police officers are always visible, they have tasers, they don't use them much, but if anybody so much as brings a pocket knife or a clipper, I think that's ridiculous, but you have to have a policy, you have to keep it consistent, and you know, if somebody posts a picture of a gun on social media or threatens anyone, slam straight to the alternative campus. We have a metal detector. We pat them down every morning, and those kids are good. And they are dealt with at age 13, 14, 15, 16. We don't have any 18-year-olds. They know what the alternative is, and it's not fun. It's called consequence for action. Well, and, and there are school districts that do have those kind of things in place. And I know what you're saying because it is ridiculous that anyone would let the, anybody with a weapon come into a school. But you can't have a metal detector and pat every kid down who walks in. Yep. So yep. you have to have serious consequences that the alternative school deals with, and we don't play. Well, we do this in just about every other area of society. We have... We have let the human condition, um, the lack of worth for human life, uh, run so pervasive through this country. We need those things. I, you know, very quickly, my, uh, my daughter uh, worked at the DA's office uh, part-time when she was going to college. And as is the case generally with most office places, when people go to lunch, other people cover for them, Right. Well, mm-hmm. she, she was in the back, the back of the DA's office. But when people would go to lunch, they'd take turns um, manning the reception desk. Well, it was her I turn. do that at school, too. Yeah. Well, she went up to the reception desk to let somebody go eat lunch. And she looks up. Yes, uh, well, can I help you? Lady pulls out a gun. Just going nuts. This is in the courthouse. 
Well, because of that incident, and thankfully nothing happened, but um, they came up, the security or police, uh, sheriff's department came up and got her. Uh, but because of that, they installed metal detectors at uh, both entrances of the courthouse. Uh, why they hadn't done that before is beyond me. But when you let liberalism run amok and control every facet of your life, uh, human life has no worth anymore to a lot of people. You have to do certain things. The short-term thing for me, as far as I'm concerned, is controlling ingress and egress, metal detectors at doors, putting uniformed police officers in place, and then long-term, get back to biblical principles, shame, consequence for action. Um, there are no freedoms without responsibility. We didn't lose that overnight. We're not going to get it back overnight, but that's the direction we need to take. Absolutely. Um, one other thing is, uh, my daughter, she's 18 now, but when she was six years old, she was riding her bike outside the house. She fell down and the little handlebar hit her in the ear. And so she was bleeding, and, of course, the neighbor knocks on the door and goes, your daughter's bleeding. I'm like, oh, emergency room. First thing they said, do you have any guns in the house? I'm like, yes, why? Why? Yep. My husband does. They're in a lockbox. I don't even know the combination. I don't even know where the key is. I don't care. But my husband is a hunter and, and so forth. I mean, is that a problem? I was so offended by that. I just can't oh, I've, tell you. I've, been, I've had the same thing happen to me with my kids. And the first thing I say is none of your business. What, what impact does that have on the care my child's receiving? But I said, yes, we absolutely do. How dare you ask me that question? <laughs> she fell off her bike. We didn't shoot her in the ear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, Kelly. Good call. Please don't be a stranger. I appreciate it very much. Um, I'm going to have some news for you on hashtag put God in prayer back in schools. You're just blowing up my email saying you can't find it. Um, all right. Uh, let's, uh, do I have time? I have time. Yeah. He says I do. I can actually see you today. That's good. Uh, let's go to Bob. Bob, thank you for waiting. Where are you calling from, Bob? Bob, uh, I mean, I'm Bob in Coppell. Good to have you. Uh, I hope I don't run it over time. I, I would be happy to sit and wait over your next uh, uh, break. I I really, I'm, everything you've said in the last five minutes probably takes away from me what I was going to say. But, uh, you know, the philosophies that you put out are absolutely fantastic. And underlying what you're really asking us as listeners and other people uh, is to figure out solutions. I've got four things, and then uh, after four things that would help long term. And you just said long term versus short term. Short term, that's just the things you were talking about. Long term, you've talked about every day for the last umpteen weeks. And I've got four things that we could concentrate on. And then one way to put them into action. All right. Well, I tell you what. We'll uh, we'll put you on hold because I don't want to cut you off in mid sentence, and um, we'll find out what your four solutions may be. Um, Nicole Deal standing by in the WBAP newsroom. Very latest breaking news. Also, we'll check your afternoon drive. Try to keep uh, keep you from getting uh, clogged up in those hot spots um, as you make your way around town. It's. Uh, Wait a minute. Let me see. Uh, I was checking to see if CNN had another. I have to watch it. I watch it so you don't have to. Um, you know, I watch uh, one, two, three. I got four different uh, channels I watch for breaking news. Nothing about a school shooter. Nothing about a fourth uh, uh, serial bomb. Nothing about that. But did you know the porn star took a polygraph test and Trump congratulated Putin on his reelection win? <laughs> Good Lord. They really think we're that stupid? They have no names. I'm sitting here. They're telling me to go to some school in Leonardtown. Yeah. But I'm sitting here because I don't want to go there. I want my son out of that school. I'm waiting for them to release my son. Huh. 
The shooter entered the school early this morning, uh, confronted another student, a female, shot her, shot another student, and then a school resource officer engaged the shooter and ended the threat. All right, let me ask you. Base, I mean, that's it, essentially. The shooter walked in the school, evidently uh, had some type of uh, relationship with a 16-year-old girl. 16, you barely learned to tie your shoes at 16. Shoots her. Shoots a 14-year-old boy, girls in critical condition, 14-year-olds in stable condition. The resource officer that also uh, worked with SWAT engaged the shooter. One shot, shooter's dead. Don't know if it was from the officer's gun or if the kid took his own life. Tell me one reason, one reason that any politician with any political party ought to be... Uh, fallen down trying to get in front of a, a microphone or a TV camera, other than the mayor or the governor or somebody with the school. What would a politician have to do there? Tell me. I, I mean, I want you to get this. I want you to, I really want you to wrap your head around this. There's no reason, no reason for any politician to be there. Senator Ben Cardin, Democrat from Maryland. I mean, I can imagine this guy was running every light in town trying to get to the school where the microphones were set up, spoke to reporters, expressed anger, saying that at a minimum, universal background checks, a ban on assault-style weapons are needed. He said he believes momentum is building for reform fueled by the student activism. These students, quoting here, these students are literally just not taking no for an answer. No to what? I can tell you that Americans are listening to our students. We are. We're still waiting for them to come up with what their solution is. Well, so far, all they've done is ask the government to protect them. I think our political system will respond. As I said before, make no apologies. A moron wrapped in an idiot. Um with a senator in front of his name. Why why is he there? It wasn't it wasn't we need to get rid of these assault weapons. Whoa was me. He, he took a pistol into school and shot the kid. It's already illegal for him to own a pistol. Oh well these students need to be answered. Oh shut up. It just all right. Zach and McKinney. Zach, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Zach? Hello, Zach. I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Rick. Thank you for taking my phone call. You bet. Uh, I was just wanted to call in today. I thought I might have a little humor. Um, I was telling David uh, a minute ago that last week my wife and I were in Jamaica, and the first night we were there, we were having dinner on the beach with all the rest of the uh, guests at the resort. And we were sitting at a table with this family from Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, we were just talking about all the different uh, things that possibly have been going on in Jamaica as far as security and all that type of stuff and crime. And the lady said, well, since we got here, I've been feeling a lot better about everything because they have uh, a security team here. And I said, yeah, but what good are they going to do? They're not armed. Or you, just were, because they're a, were you in Kingston or, were you in Kingston or Montego Bay or where? We were two hours east of Montego Bay. Okay. Uh, I'm only asking because I've been there many times. I, got, I had a guy that used to be a supervisor for me uh, uh, up in the Dakotas, and he went on vacation, never showed back up, left his car, left his stuff, found a place, bought a restaurant, and uh, came with a house, and he's still there. Uh, yeah, it, it's a gun-free zone because every cop in Jamaica carries an Uzi. Did you notice that? We did notice that. But but back to my story, you know, I said, yeah, but what good are they going to do? They're not armed. I mean, just because they're wearing a uniform with a patch on their shoulders and so security doesn't mean anything. And I said, but I, then she's like, you know, she was kind of dumbfounded and, and stuck, speechless. And she's like, you know what? You make a good point. And then I said, well, but here, hold on a second. We all can sleep well at night while we're here. Because there is a sign outside the hotel that says "gun free zone," <laughs> <laughs> and the table just started laughing. <laughs> yeah, and say now that's every school in America. Yeah, if if you notice, if you look around, you know they don't. Uh, 
you know, they'll get up in your face. But, you know, you, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a, uh, a police officer, security officer, or whatever it happens to be, depending on the hotel and the beach. And they all carry Uzis. And they wear those blue uniforms with Uzis. And not many people get out of line. Uh, good call. I, man, you made me jealous. You know, do I need some time off? Well, based on the first hour, I probably do. Uh, let's go to, uh, Kevin in Rockwall. Kevin, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Kevin? Doing great. How are you doing, Mr. Roberts? Good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I personally believe that, uh, metal, uh, metal detectors just beating around the bush. Metal detectors, they ain't going to solve anything. Um, just like locks. Locks are for honest people. Uh, metal detectors, if there's one sitting at the door and a security guard standing there, a person with a bad intention, walk up, shoot the metal, uh, shoot the security guard, walk on in the building, do whatever he's going to do. I mean, it's, it's not metal detectors. It's not going to stop nothing. This morning. Well, they, uh, they, I, the I, hold on a second, Kevin, if, if I ahead. may. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Um, but, yes, they do stop things. They stop things all the time. Um, whether it's, you know, at an airport or a courthouse or a judge's chamber, whatever it is, they do stop things. I mean, usually a, a metal detector with a sheriff's deputy sitting there stops a lot. I felt a lot better about where my daughter was working. She worked at the DA's office for, I think, six, seven years. And after, you know, a lady ends up on the third floor with a gun, they put a, uh, they put a sheriff and a, and a metal detector at both, uh, both doors going in and out of the courthouse. And so yes, far, sir. nothing happened other than I could sleep better knowing where my daughter worked. Yes, sir. Now, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that metal detectors don't deter a, a lot of stuff. It does. These kids that are going into these schools, these, these kids, aren't, they don't care about deterrent. What, they're going there with one intention, and, and that is to wreak havoc. And bad people that intend on wreaking havoc, um, like I said, it's kind of like it probably would have alerted uh, staff earlier today uh, when the kid went into to uh, into the school and did the shooting. Um, but I do believe the answer is going to be armed staff at these schools because oh, I, there's no. I doubt. don't believe. Yeah, I, I don't believe we're not going to be able to psych- psychologically profile these people and find out who they are before they do what they do. No, I, you know, I said that, you know, this is a two, two phase system. First phase, immediate uniformed officer inside the school, limited ingress and egress, metal detector doors, whatever. Um, that's short term, long term, put biblical principles back in the schools. Like the, the founders used uh, to start this country. I, I mean, I don't see any other way, any other way. It, it's have we lost lost our minds it just okay uh good call i appreciate it let's go to uh bob bob is back bob has uh has four things he wants to say for that you made a, men- a mention again a, a while ago about uh, uh the politicians and stuff you know the problem is they ought to say they ought to take into account their their constituents rather than their re-election. Enough said. Anyway, uh, the four things I was talking about to help solve not only the school shootings but a lot of other of our problems, and then I've got a way to put that into action. Number one, God, as you say, back in schools and back in our life. Number two, uh, parenting, more attention to your kids, to their future, to your own future as their parents, and putting God back in parenting. Number three, uh, you got to get uh, PC out of our our country. PC is one of the most terrible things that's ever happened to this country. It 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 is it has prevented us from becoming friends with each other's uh, sex, religion, or whatever. Oh, I agree with that. Po- liberalism and political correctness go hand in hand. Number that four, is Bob. Correct. And then the fourth thing is 
we've got to, through all these other things, change the educational system so that our journalism classes teach, uh, uh, you know, editorial journalism versus news. Well, I, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, with networks that are heavily biased, and the news directors pretty much pretty much control that. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I would uh, lay the bulk of that at journalism classes at uh, at college or universities, uh, but I've been in a lot of newsrooms, and it depends, quite honestly, what uh, what bias they have as a network and who the news directors are. Bob, I appreciate you calling back. Going to step aside very quickly, check your afternoon drive, and back with your calls. All right, 348 the time. You know, there ought to be a law. Yeah, just what we need, another law. Keep politicians away from school shootings. Keep politicians away from school shootings. All they're doing is compounding the problem. They get the kids all jazzed up. The news media falls over itself trying to get, well, what does Senator so-and-so say? What does Congressman so-and-so I don't care. They've got nothing to do. It's a school issue, a city issue, a county issue. It's not a campaign issue. You want a campaign? Go back to D.C., Get in your bubble, campaign all day long. There should be something that keeps politicians from showing up at these school shootings. All right. All right. Let me go to uh, Rick in Dallas. Rick, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Rick? I'm fine. The thing that will keep a politician away from a uh, shooting thing, a microphone, is to make them a politician for life and don't make them responsible for anything. They're always campaigning. Any rate, I think we're missing the point on arming the teachers or the, the armed guards and, and uniformed guards. And what we just need to do is just do away with the prohibition of a legally carried firearm in, a, in, in these places. The, uh, you know, if a teacher wants to carry, let him carry. You're not going to force him to carry. Well, you don't want, you don't want a teacher carrying that hasn't demonstrated some proficiency and been certified. No, of course not. And we don't want anybody in there that doesn't want to carry. Exactly. But, you know, I was looking at some FBI statistics that, you know, violent crime has really plummeted in the past 20 years. And, you know, the only place that crime is really high is gang related. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother program. But, um, you know, since what really started happening about 20 years ago was concealed carry. And there was just a bunch of good guys that had been proven and vetted and trained. They were out there with guns on the street. And I think we could approach this the same way in the school was just saying, okay, the prohibition on the firearm is over. Go ahead. If you if you can legally carry anywhere, you can carry in here. And uh, don't tell anybody that they are armed. Just let them wonder. And, you know, and I think that would be a lot more effective. Because it's it's the certainty that there will not be anybody returning fire that is causing all of this stuff, right? No, I, there's there's no doubt, and we've talked about it ad nauseum. You know, get rid of the, your no or your gun free zone sign. That's that's absurd. If a teacher wants to carry, has demonstrated proficiency, certified, let him carry. Uniform police officer in every school, limited ingress and egress into the school and out. That's short term. Long-term, biblical principles, bringing back consequence for action, uh, that's what you do. Uh, that's almost foreign to people, isn't it? It's almost for Responsibility for action. Shame. Hmm. Well, I don't know about that, but what about this over here? No, that's it. That hits at the core of the problem. You make people responsible for their actions. You bring back, you don't indict the whole classroom for one knucklehead. You pull him out of school. Well, what about his self-esteem? I'm not concerned about that. You're concerned about the 29 other students. Well, Rick, you're cold-hearted. Well, I'm a realist. I try to be. That's what you do. And if you got some kid that's uh, from a broken home or a single-parent family or uh, the parents are absent, you need to maybe reach out to that kid. 
Well, if I do it for that kid, then I'm going to have to. No, you won't. Not every kid's in the same situation. You know, you're not there to parent. You're there to educate. Maybe an alternative school would be better. That kid be better suited in. You don't ignore things because you may have to go sit in the legal department's office for about 15 minutes. If that were the case, I'd never been a talk show host. All right. Uh, good call. I appreciate it. Let me, um, let me go to John and, uh, John, where are you calling from, sir? Roanoke, Texas. Good to have you. Yeah. Uh, do you know what security measures were in place at Sandy Hook Elementary? No. They had a metal detector. Every exterior window was bullet resistant glass. They had a security. Okay. What's the point, John? Bullet resistant glass. What's the point? The point is, when he walked into the entryway, it took him one clip and less than 30 okay, seconds. Okay, all right. I don't need all the details. The we already know. What's the point of the call? Well, the point of the call is we need to arm the teachers so that they don't know where the security is. Yeah, we, we've talked about that. Again, ad nauseum. Over and over and over and over again. Okay, arm the teachers. Teachers want to be armed? Arm them. Put a police officer in the school in addition. You make it a hard target, not a soft target. We get that. Everybody agrees on that, I'm pretty sure. Take down the gun-free zone signs. Teachers want to be armed? Arm them. Or let them be armed if they want. And a uniformed police officer. Okay, we, we get that point. That's not the problem. That's the, that's the Band-Aid for the fix. Why does everybody ignore the problem? The problem are the kids or the people. And... The peripheral, certainly the parents. We get it. I understand. School safety is number one. Part of that school safety, arming teachers if they want to be armed and demonstrate proficiency. Arm police officers inside the school. Limited, uh, limiting ingress and egress. That's a given. We don't even need to hold a vote for that, do we? Now, when are we going to deal with the real issue, the real problem? The mentality of the kids, the mentality of, in some cases, the staff, the mentality of the parents. When are we going to deal with that? Well, I don't know, Rick. That's, that sounds like an, whew, that sounds like an awful lot of work. It is. You didn't lose value for human life in a week or two weeks or a year or six months. This has been going on for 40, 50 years. If there's no value for human life, then this is what you end up with. And politicians are exacerbating the problem every time they show up at one of these school shootings. There needs to be... I'm sorry. If you're a politician, you're not the governor, you're not the mayor of the city, you're not part of the school, why are you there? Somebody answer me. Why are these politicians showing up in droves? This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, four minutes after the hour, uh, producer Dave has... Uh, screening your calls and such now producer dave I, I you know when i'm doing a show i'm in the moment so when people ask me about it later i i don't i don't have a clue exactly uh, i mean you guys watch it as it's happening i'm in the moment i don't remember when i said what exactly you and usually I mean? taking notes yeah exactly um i'm thinking hashtag keep politicians away from school shootings and kids that's a long hashtag. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but we got to do it. Hashtag do your job, USA. <laughs> yeah, how many times have they been told that? It, it, it's, it's insane to me, and it's frustrating. You could hear from the time I started the show. You and I talk. The way I, this I works, felt it when he came in this, this uh, afternoon. Yeah, Dave and I talk a couple times before the show, and Randy and I usually, you know, hook up during some part of the show about something. Um but I was frustrated. I was frustrated. Not, you know, obviously nobody wants the loss of life from shooter or the kids or anything else, but I was frustrated because it was like, 
over and over and over again. You know, whether it's Columbine or Sandy Hook or uh, the Florida shooting, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. Politicians, like, come out of the woodwork. I'm not talking about the mayors of the city. They, you know, they should be there. Um, the governors even. But politicians, senators and congressmen. It's like they show up, well, this is why we need to blah, 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 blah. And nobody ever calls them out on it, ever. It's like, excuse me, Senator, why are you here? Well, it's, you know, these kids will be listened to. Okay, well, the, you know, we put up with you treating them like little adults when, in fact, they're teenagers, and you're compounding the problem emotionally, and now you're using them, using them. Look up the word use. You're using them to push a political agenda. You know, this moron, this senator, um, he's out of Maryland. Uh, well, we need to ban the uh, assault-style weapons. The kid used a pistol, which is already illegal for him to have or purchase. So how about that? Well, that doesn't go uh, along with my talking points. And we need universal... Ba- what, why, are they, why are they there? What are they doing? No one. I asked the question. Not one person has answered that question. Why do these politicians show up like fleas on a dog every time there's a school shooting? You know, they have a kid there? No. You know somebody there? No. Well, why are you there? Showing my support for blah, 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 blah. You're there for political purposes. You are using, exploiting the death of kids for your own political purposes. No one can give me one rational reason why these guys show up. You know, we don't need gun control. We need politician control. You know, you, you barely earn your check as it is. And now you want to exploit our kids for your purposes? That's what frustrated me. I mean, yes, we know teachers, if they want to be armed, they should be armed, and most of them, I think, would probably do that. Uh, If they demonstrate proficiency, get certified, fine. Put police officers in schools. Of course, you know, here's the stumbling block there. We don't even pay police officers what they're worth on the streets, let alone in the schools. So, you, well, you know, Rick, you know, it's, it's all about gun control. No, it's about paying your police officers, your sheriff's department, what they're worth. And it's about something much more difficult than taking a close-up picture for TV tonight of an AR-15. How scary is that? You know, they, they just exploit the fears and the frailties of the human condition. It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. But that's what they want to do, Rick. They want to make it seem like they have control of everything. Oh, I know. And we need them. And that's the reason why they're running down to all these mass casualty situations, a school shooting, flooding, et cetera. And that's how they're saying, hey, you need us because without us, we couldn't fix this. Well, if you think about it, you know, then that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. That's a good point. You know, during the the flooding after the hurricane and all that, we had Governor Abbott. That he should be there. He's the governor. And Ted you know, Cruz went down and there. And Ted also. Cruz, you know, he, he's down there. He's from the state. You know, we're going to try and get these resources and those resources. But other than that, I don't want to see a politician in front of the TV camera. Hey, look at me! I'm just like you. I've got on my Carhartt jacket. I'm down here in a rowboat. You know, it didn't do anything for me. But I'll give uh, Governor Abbott and Senator Cruz. They didn't go down there to fix things. They were like, hey, what's going on? What can yeah, we do to help to you? To offer it, help. It wasn't yeah. a, hey, you know, we got to stop these these little flooding waters. How can we stop flooding waters? See, they, build, build they, didn't, they didn't go down and start hammering Democrats. Well, if the Democrats would give us more money to shore up this levy and blah, blah, blah. That's essentially what politicians are doing now at school shootings. You know, these kids will be listened to. These kids want action. They will not be told no. They don't, the kids don't even know what the questions are. You know, as I said, Senator Cardin, and there were a few others, you know, uh, we need student activism. For what? You can barely educate them to read past an eighth grade level uh, when they get out of high school. These students are literally just not taking no for an answer. I can tell you that Americans are listening to our students. 
No, we're just watching it play off on the biased news media. They're shouting and screaming and saying, government, help us. There's nothing the government can do. Nothing. Well, it's kind of like what you said the other day, Rick, while we were watching this child abuse on yeah, television. This, this is nothing less, nothing less than child abuse by politicians on your kids and mine. That's what it is. Uh, all right, uh, 11 minutes after the hour, 4.11 the time. Let me do this. Yeah, When I get frustrated, I, I rant and rave. Um, and, and you probably do too. I'm uh, just sick of it. I, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of talking about guns when guns have nothing to do with it. Tired about talking about the NRA when they had nothing to do with it. We're talking about something that takes a concerted effort, some expertise, and heavy lifting, That's and it's not very much fun. We've got to reverse our mindset on how we treat kids. You treat them like kids, not like little short adults that maybe you'll be a vote one day. That's what you do. And you don't use them as a political shield, shield for your critics, which is also being done. You know, somebody asked me, I know I got a break, but somebody asked me the other day, you know, it's Rick, Hillary did this and Hillary did that. And yes, Hillary ought to be in jail. All right, stop. I get it. Hillary should be under the jail. I agree with you. You know as well as I do that's not going to happen. Nobody in D.C. That, I'll give you an example. After the second tower fell on 9-11, did the politicians start talking about uh, shoring up our borders? No, because there's no political will to do that. Not from Republicans or Democrats. There was no political will to secure the nation even after 9-11, there was no political will. So that should tell you, if it follows, if there's no political will to do something and something needs to be done at a federal level, it's not going to get done. There's no political will to put Hillary in jail. But we just rehash this thing over and over and over and over again. And, and somebody asked me, well, why is it we keep dealing with this every day? Because Republicans won't stop talking about her. And I'm probably as guilty as anyone else. She's not running for office. She lost. Yes, it's comical. I guess if you're looking for a, some type of comical relief, that's one thing. Yeah, if, if the Republicans would stop talking about her, she'd probably go away or self-destruct, figuratively speaking. Oh, man. This is a day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, this is probably not a day to cut me off in traffic. Yeah. All right, 18 minutes after the hour. 4.18 the time. Glad you're along. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Broadcasting every day. Your afternoon drive out of Dallas, Fort Worth. And, of course, heard across the country. It's toll-free everywhere. 1-800-288-WBAP. Well, let's go to uh, Angela in Springtown. Angela, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Doing good. How about you, Rick? Good. Okay, well, take a deep breath. We are finally at a point in this uh, country that we are, I feel like we're swinging the other way, but you're exactly right. The problem here is uh, we need to put God and prayer back in our schools. We need to get people and get these kids out from in front of their video games the worst thing that probably ever happened was for the graphics industry to make these video games look more realistic because these kids think that you shoot somebody and they're going to show up in the next game because they're unable to differentiate between reality and a game and um, we need to get government out of our business we need it we did a better job taking care of our communities within our community than the government ever did with, um, you know, meals on wheels or whatever. Right. Our, our communities used to take care of each other. And we've lost a whole generation. We've got kids raising kids. There's no discipline. We need to take away the participation trophy and explain to kids that you have to earn your way. There are no handouts. But yeah, I, you're right. You're, you're, you're dead on, Angela. It's uh, 
But how do you get that message out there and get it out in such a way that people realize, wow, this is better for me long term? I mean, everybody wants a quick fix. You know what I mean? Um, right. They want something, you know, flip a button, turn a switch, uh, pay somebody, whatever it is. Nobody wants to per- put in the hard work. You know what I mean? You're exactly right. And I think it's one to rely on our faith-based organizations. Um, I am amazed at how many kids don't believe that you're supposed to spank a kid or swat a kid. And, I mean, I had this discussion with my daughter. Would you rather him run out in front of a car and you be sitting by his bedside in ICU, or would you rather bust his rear end to explain to him because she had told him over and over again in the parking lot, hold my hand? Yeah, I, I, you know, I get a lot of people that call, and they say, well, Rick, everything went uh, went off the rails when we were told we couldn't spank our kids anymore. And uh, wait a minute, who told you that? <laughs> well, 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 you know, child abuse, blah, blah, blah. Look, I've been a child advocate for uh, the better part of 28 years. I have yet to meet anybody that has suffered a detrimental consequence uh, for swatting their kid on the backside to keep them from touching a stove. If you don't know the difference between, you know, a pop on the backside to get their attention uh, and beating your kid, you're too stupid to have kids. Exactly. And that's a lot of the problem. We, we have kids that, that think that their babies are going to be born knowing everything they know. And we've got to educate and do a better job. It's going to take at least a generation. Um, you're, you're, you know, you're, you are so, I talk to people all the time, well, Rick, You know, my five-year-old, he already knows he's gay. What? (laughs) What are you talking about? You know, he barely makes it to the bathroom by himself on time. What do you mean he knows he's gay? Look, you know, people, why do you hate gay people? I don't hate gay people. I hate hate the whole bureaucracy of gayness being shoved down our throats as though it's something, you know, that we have to subscribe to. I mean, one of my best friends is Bonnie DeManis. Um, the district attorney for San Diego, one of the largest DA uh, offices in the nation. And she and Leslie have been together forever, uh, and her dog just died last year. So, Aww. I mean, you know, when when we meet, we talk about issues. We talk about law. We talk about, we don't talk about, well, let me tell you who I slept with, and you can tell me who you slept with. We don't do, nobody does that. Exactly. And, and it's, don't put labels on. I don't care what your lifestyle is. Don't force it on me. I'm not going to force my personal lifestyle on you. Um, and, and and we get along just fine that way. Yeah, and stop, and stop you know, touting, well, I could tell when my daughter was four years old, she was transgender. Okay, you are way too idiotic to have a kid. Um, exactly. The best and, thing and, you can do is put it up for adoption. <laughs> and, and parents, these parents today, a lot of times don't realize how impressionable their children's minds are. And so they direct them down the path psychologically without maybe intentionally doing so um but there just needs to be uh i don't know (laughs) an intervention no there needs you know what there needs to be there needs to be an opening of of common sense and the soul Uh, i mean you know we need to stop with the political agendas we need to stop with you know whatever the politically correct uh topic du jour happens to be and just be each other. Like you said, the churches, the communities uh, used to take care of each other. I, I'll tell you very quickly, if you got time. Um, you. you know, I grew up out in the country. And, you know, you did your chores. If somebody, a neighbor, and that was usually five, six, seven miles away. If a neighbor, right. what we used to call getting down, it didn't mean dancing. It meant they were sick or they got hurt or something. And you did, nobody said anything. Nobody had to make a call or a request. Uh, my grandmother would make what she used to call, she's making a plate for the neighbors because they're sick. So run this down to them and, you know, you'd take the food to them. Um, you know, and especially during hay season, if somebody got hurt or was sick, and I remember this happening a couple times, you know, midnight after uh, guys got through cutting their own hay, you'd see all these headlights from combines coming down the road to go cut somebody else's hay. That's just what you did. And then you and went home and well. slept like a rock. Yes. People respected each other. They they didn't they weren't intrusive in your personal business, but they were there if you needed them, and you didn't have to worry or wonder if the government was going to hand out and help you. Exactly, the, the government, government wasn't a part of the equation. Else. The government exactly. wasn't a part of the equation, and they shouldn't have been. 
the founding fathers didn't want them to be. Right. Uh, good call. I can talk to you all day long. Good call. Um, well, that's a, it's, it's going to get better. It's, we've got a lot of work to do, but um, I, I think we I think we are on this way back to the other direction. So. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang my hopes on that, Angela. That's Angela from Springtown. All right, we need to check your afternoon drive. Nicole Deal is standing by in the WBAP newsroom. Very latest breaking news. And uh, let me see, what's the breaking news? Uh, this is my little thing. Uh, we got the the fourth uh, serial bombing around Austin, one in FedEx. Uh, we got the school shooting. Um, CNN, what are they talking about? Putin hates America, and Donald Trump called him to congratulate him. And the porn star that had unprotected sex with Donald Trump passed a polygraph test. Oh, there you go. All the news you need, right? Now, for the real news... Stand by. All right, 4.32 the time. Now, see, that was real news. That was news from the WBAP News Center with uh, Nicole Deal. But let me see. Let me check real quick. What uh, What is highlighted on CNN? Ah, porn star, playmate, and reality star, all in legal action over Trump. Oh, there you go. Yeah, school shootings, not enough. Uh, serial bombings aren't enough. You know, Facebook under fire. None of that's enough. The porn star is tweeting about Trump. Unprotected sex. Okay. Good. I mean, that's almost embarrassing. If I owned that network or was the news director for I would be embarrassed. Unless, of course, I was getting my marching orders from some hair-on-fire liberal someplace. I mean, did you see that? Yes, I did. I mean, I've got all these monitors in here just in case something happens. And just a steady diet of, you know, Trump's bad, Trump's Satan spawn, Trump's this, Trump. I don't care. I don't, you know, honestly, I don't think about the president that much. I think about what, you know, my audience and I'm dealing with and, okay. All right. Uh, Shall we get to the calls? Let's do that. Yes, do it. I'm not as frustrated as I was earlier. Okay. I think this one will kind of cheer you up. I think you guys, you know, coming in and hosing me down, that, that helped. Uh, let's go to Anna in Brian. Anna, thank you for waiting. I appreciate your patience. Hi. Thank you. What's going on, Anna? Um, well, you were talking about earlier how us kids were being used as a political pawn in this whole part of all the school shootings going on with all the protests and the walkout. Right. This actually happened at my school. Uh, I'm an eighth grader, and we, I did not know about this until this day, um, had a walkout at school. Our school dismissed us, and I was told that it was go to pray for the victim. I had no idea it was anything about gun control. They got us out there, took a bunch of pictures, posted it on social media, and I was humiliated because those are not my beliefs. I do not think there's a problem with gun control. The school shootings that have happened are because those kids had their own problems. It's not the fact that they had access to guns. I go hunting on the weekends. I have guns. I wouldn't shoot up the school. It's not. And they used us to get their point across. And I felt like a victim to that because it's just not right. We're kids. We didn't understand. And we were told differently as to why we were going out there. Okay. And and how old are you? 15? I'm 14. You're 14 years old. Okay, so when they let class out for that 17 minutes or whatever it was, what did they tell you you were doing? They didn't tell us anything. The teachers just, like, let us go, and I was told by other kids, oh, this is to go, it's a memorial service type thing to pray for the victims. Our teachers did not inform us as to what it actually was. So when was highly irresponsible on their part. When you, uh, uh, that's true. When you got out there... Who was taking pictures of you? Teachers. Teachers were taking picture of you. On their phone. On their phone. Okay, I get it. And so the whole school walked out? Yes. There were very few, few people who didn't know, and I guess it's because the who didn't go, because I guess they actually knew what it was. The rest of us did not. And I was humiliated because that was just, I would never go out there if I had actually known. Well, Anna, you're... you're... 14 years old, you're an 8th grader, um, you were uh, you walked out of class thinking it was one thing, when in fact, based on all the protests and everything, it was something else. 
So I'm going to get, I'm going to try and fix that for you. I, I'm going to let you speak to hundreds of thousands of people right now. Anna's 14 in the eighth grade. Anna, what do you think about politicians using all these kids nationwide uh, for gun control? It disgusts me. We are children. I mean, yes, we are young adults, but we. No, Anna, you're fo- you're 14. You're not a young adult. You're a young lady. Go ahead. I mean, I'm just I don't appreciate the fact that just because they want more votes or whatever it is that they want that they use us innocent just kids who don't know what's going on and they put us in the middle of it because i don't care i don't want to be used so you get more views and more publicity Uh, and that's exactly what it is anna i'm going to do something just for you all right uh based on anna's call um i'm going to put something up on uh wbap facebook facebook wbap hashtag schools politician free zone how's that that would be awesome okay uh david uh, according to anna that would be awesome i concur uh schools politician free zone got that i got it anna done thank you so much all right i appreciate the call actually i got an email like that not too long ago or earlier today as well hashtag schools politician free zone well, give me one good reason why the politicians should be there other than to manipulate and use your children. Why are they there? Well, Rick, we, we kind of miss what she said also. Her class, they, they didn't have a walkout. They were dismissed. So the whole well, walkout. She said, she said so, her teachers it, let her go. Yeah, they dismissed it. But remember, it was supposed to be a walkout. These students were going to stand up and walk out of the class. Well, she didn't get the memo, all right? She didn't get the memo. Evidently, there wasn't a lot of uh, discussion back and forth. But they got pictures of all the kids outside, and that's what they were looking for, right? All right. uh, Schools. Politician-free zone. I'm serious, man. I'm just as serious as I'm sitting here behind this microphone. There is not one good reason to have any politician other than the mayor, maybe the governor, uh, involved after one of these school shootings, not one good reason for a politician to show up. Oh, hey, look at me. I'm here. I'm a senator. I'll talk to you. Come on over here. Come on. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, forgive me. These senators, these congressmen are prostituting our kids. They're prostituting our kids. Well, they don't know yet, but their voices need to be heard. They haven't even come up with a solution yet. They don't even know what the question is that they're looking for the answer. They're being manipulated by politicians. Rick, you're really off on the politicians today, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'd I'd just be happy if they did 50% of the job they're supposed to do. All right. Uh, Let me me go to Anna. Thank you for the call. Uh, Let's go to Tim in Dallas. Tim, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Tim? Rush, appreciate you very much, man. Thank you. But, you know, I've got to ask you this question. What do you expect from our logic-free zone known as Washington, D.C.? Well, uh, that's, that's a that, – forget <laughs> it. I mean, no, nothing's <laughs> going to change that. I've, I've worked in Washington, D.C., training uh, uh, people from TV to do radio, and, and oh, I lived across the bridge in Alexandria, and it's, it's a lost cause. I mean, there's – if you shut down the political machine that it, the way it runs there – that basically it would be a ghost town. Well, Rush, I mean, Rush, I am so sorry, Rick. I, I no, you're didn't mean that. That's all right. But the, the thing about it is uh, we have got to put the Ten Commandments back in, take our founding fathers' principles, and reestablish them back in our nation's national life, but more importantly in our people's national life because – in Second Chronicles, I believe it is, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven above and heal their land. That is the solution so simple. We have got to, as you said earlier, get God back in our national life, but most importantly in our individual lives because it's the home, the parents. That's where the kids really learn. And so, you know, the examples that the parents set are also part of the issue. And uh, I just really appreciate you getting out there with, with this information. 
and thank you. I I appreciate it. Go to uh, WBAP Facebook Schools Politician Free Zone. Share it. Get it out in front of as many people as you possibly can. Liberals are going to hate this. They're going to hate this because they're going to know exactly what I'm doing. You know, I'm no theologian, uh, so I can't quote scripture. I mean, there's a few I know. But what he, the scripture he just gave you is absolutely correct. Ah, oh, Rick, I don't believe in God. I don't believe. Okay, well, that's fine. That's your prerogative. Uh, tell you what, just as an experiment, try it. And if it doesn't work, you're vindicated. There's no God. If you try it and it does work, well, okay, maybe. All right, I'll take a maybe. That'll work. You see what I'm saying? All right. Uh, go to WBAP, Facebook, WBAP, hashtag schools, politician free zone. Politicians, you don't even need to be in the same zip code, save for the mayor, the governor, perhaps. Uh, you don't need to be there. And if you're there, I can only deduce one thing. You're using kids to push a political agenda. Stop. Stop using our kids. Let's check your afternoon drive. All right, 4.47 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, and this three hours flew by, probably because I was in a rage, most of it. Um, just got an email in, and if you want to email me, you can do that at Rick Roberts Show, two S's, Rick Roberts, and then show, at the WBAP.com. Um, also, did you put that up, David? Did you put up the hashtag yet? I will put that up once we get the audio, and we'll put Anna with it. Oh. Anna, you're going to be famous. Okay. All right. Uh, Anna and hashtag schools, politician free zone. We'll be up uh, on Facebook, WBAP, about uh, 15 minutes after five, right? Roughly about that time. Frank. Okay. I got this in from uh, Kent just a minute ago, and I debated on whether to read to you from a prepared text, but I'm going to. Rick, I'd like to offer information on these shootings from a different reference point. Why are all these things happening? Immorality is increasing in America, and along with it, literally no respect for life. The truth is, statistically, the children in school today were all more likely to be killed in their mother's womb by abortion than being shot by someone. You know, and then he, and I can't go through all of it. He goes, uh, these are his ideas as far as uh, changing things. How do we fix this? Start back the military draft. 17 and up go into the military unless they have education or a vocation or they're working toward one that matters. Not something like African-American studies or women's studies of, at uh, Berkeley. It has to be a degree in which sustained income can be generated. The U.S. military would have caught the Florida shooter even with all the other failures. Number two, eliminate the National Education Department. Put education back in the hands of parents. Put schools under parent control. Allow parents to put their kids in any good school. That makes sense. Uh, number three, uh, the Bible at the center of all education, K through 12. Um, number four, as far as topics, U.S. government as a graduation requirement at all levels. Civics, how capitalism works, how the Constitution works, what it means to be moral. Number five. Stop killing kids from the womb on. Number six, set up TV from 10 p.m. to be safe. Uh, all TV shows approved and monitored like was done for many, many years in this country prevent filth from TV during this time so families can sit and watch together. Same for commercials. Number seven, all school, school shootings, automatic death penalty nationally. And number eight, stop teaching theory as fact. Our public schools are growing the next killer as I write this email. Kent. Um, you know, some of that I agree with. Some of that I, I, I agree with. Some of it I question. But at the end of the day, what we're doing now doesn't work. And it's not going to work. You know, we talked after the Florida shooting, I, ma I made a statement that, that afternoon. I said, you know, God forbid, but it's going to happen because we have free will in this country, the next school shooting is right around the corner. How long has it been? Three weeks? Four weeks? Um, and it's it, it's going to happen again. So you've got to take steps to protect yourself. Short term. 
long-term biblical principles. 34 days. 34 days. Uh, William in Louisville. William, thank you for waiting. How you doing, William? I'm doing just fine. What's going on today? Um, I was listening to Anna talk. Uh, uh, sounds like a very bright eighth grader. Um, but uh, I was concerned that she said that her teachers were taking pictures with their phones of this um, supposed walkout, which wasn't. And uh, I'm a high school teacher myself. And if I was taking pictures of my students and posting them on social media for some kind of you know political uh, statement or something like that, I could probably get fired for that. Um, I think that's a violation of the students' rights, and they're minors. Well, you know, I, I, that sounds right. I don't know if it's legal or not, uh, but as I look at this and I see these senator and congressmen, you know, flying in from all over the nation to take advantage, once again, of a school shooting to push their political agenda, uh, you, I guess the, the teachers might be guilty by association if they did that, Um I think what the politicians are doing is much more, much more egregious than, than that. Uh, but I get what you're saying. By the way, I wanted to comment. I don't know who Anna's parents or parent is, uh, but they've done a pretty decent job, I think. Uh, really good job. Oh, I'd agree with that for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, Anna, good job. Anna's parents or parent, good job. Uh, and, William, I appreciate uh, what you do every day. Speaking of Anna, she's from Arkansas, right? And she's visiting her grandparents on spring break. Oh, we that's sure. the reason why she called in, and she's riding around with her grandfather in the car, listening to us. All right. Well, Anna's grandfather—I don't know who you are, but uh, you got uh, got a really great granddaughter there. I wish, uh, you know, eighth grade. I'm not sure what I was doing, trying to figure out how not to go to school, probably, but. Um, <laughs> that was it. If I couldn't play ball, I didn't go to school. I was going to say, I was waiting for football season yeah, or baseball season. That's what I was waiting for. Pretty sad. Yeah. Now, she uh, She's very well spoken. Uh, she presents her uh, her position very well, has good vocabulary, and, uh, you know, I was impressed. And, by the way, Anna, a portion of uh, the segment I did with Anna uh, will be up on WBAP Facebook. And, of course, that's seen everywhere. Uh, that's a little later, probably 5.15, 5.30 or so. Uh, it'll be hashtag uh, schools, politician-free zones. Obviously, the gun-free zone didn't work very well. Uh, maybe the politician-free zone will work even better. Uh, all right, I don't know what happened uh, to the day. It's gone. But uh, we've got some things that we're, uh, we we're going to interact with you a little bit more. And we'll tell you more about that uh, tomorrow the next day. Um, thank you so much for being a part of the show. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether you agree with me is always my priority. Uh, be which, uh, watching for uh, Facebook, WBAP, Schools, Politician-Free Zones. Uh, that's uh, That'll be up in about 35 minutes or so. Share that if you would. Get that in front of us. Uh, you know, by the way, hashtag uh, put uh, God in prayer back in schools. Over 73,000 people uh, saw that based on you sharing it back and forth. So good job. We appreciate it. I'll be back with you tomorrow at 2, your afternoon drive. Mark Levin's next. Uh, Stick around. Nicole Deal's got all your news. From the WBAP News Center, I'm Rick Roberts. News Talk 820 WBAP. Wide open, you get tired and you don't show it. Dig a little deeper when you think you can't dig no more. That's the only way I know.